Hey everybody, Suxidu here, founder of OnlineFitnessBusiness.com and in today's video, we're gonna to continue to talk about scaling your online fitness business. So you're, if you're already having some success with online coaching and you're interested to find out how to scale, or maybe you are just getting started but you still wanna know how to scale anyway because you're ambitious and forward thinking, then this is the video for you. Before I go any further, I have to say, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and hit that thumbs up button as well and give the video a like, it helps us and helps other people find our stuff too. So today's video, how to scale your online fitness business. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read from my screen right here. It's gonna seem very rude, but there's a lot of words. So I'm not gonna remember them all whilst looking at the camera. So let me just read this bit out. So you made the decision to grow your online business. Congratulations. Now, get ready for the next challenge. How to scale your business for growth. Even if you manage to sell like crazy, you'll soon have another problem. You have to be able to deliver to all those new customers. Scalability, scalability is about capacity and capability. Does your business have the capacity to grow? Will your businesses business systems, infrastructure, and team be able to accommodate growth. Scaling and growth are two different things, right? As I just mentioned, scalability is about capacity and capability. Growth is just like, let's go to the moon and everything breaks, right? And it's not maintained. If growth causes your company to stumble because of confusion, poor service, insufficient staff, miscommunication, not enough delivery capacity, you're gonna have unhappy customers, right? So that's where it's a case of, if you're just looking at growth, but capabilities to deliver at that rate of growth, like drops off, then you're just gonna crash and burn, right? Uh, the manual processes that you have right now may be fine right now, but they may start to break and crumble and crash and burn as you try and scale. Um, you'll either spend your time putting out fires or desperately trying to keep your head above water, all of which is stressful, right? Scaling a business means setting the stage to enable and support growth in your company. It means having the ability to grow without being hampered. It requires planning and the right systems, staff, processes, in a lot of cases, technology and products. So I'm not gonna do that again. Read a lot of text from the screen because I felt like I was being rude by not looking at you, but that was just a vital bit of context for what we're going to be talking about today, scaling, not just growth, um, and a bit of insight into what it actually means. So here's what we will cover today, uh, assessing your current situation, which is always step one, before you should ever think about growth. And some of you will do this just kind of subconsciously, unconsciously. Um, you'll constantly be assessing your current situation and making the right decisions for the next step, right, which is great. Um, Product options slash business models at scale. That's gonna take up the large chunk of what we speak about today, but we'll also be touching on constantly throughout this talk, uh, this video, hiring, training, and managing your personal visual, vision and goals and how that impacts the decisions that you make as you scale, the impact you want to have, and ultimately your strengths and weaknesses. <clears throat> so the first step is always to assess where your, current, where your business currently is, right? So a lot of people are just thinking like, I want this product, I want to sell group programs, I want to do a membership site, um, I want to charge more, I want to do all these different things. But that's all dictated by what's currently going on in the business. Is there demand for new things? Do you even have demand for the current thing that you sell? Um, what is your audience in terms of size, engagement, persona, who are they, what, would, what do they want, what do they need? Um, how have existing or previous products that you've launched and sold, how have they been received? Current team, like where is that at? Do you have the capacity to deliver what you want to deliver with the current team? Are they the right fit? Have they been trained, managed? Um, and are they operating as a team should? Current infrastructure and, and processes and, and budget sometimes as well, if there's considerations to make around, you know, maybe paid marketing or something like that. Um, the first stop often is what's worked well in the past 12 months and what are the key takeaways and what hasn't worked well in the past 12 months, and what are the key takeaways. So instead of looking forward first, a lot of the time when it comes to scaling, it's about looking back 
or looking at right now so that you can then make the right decisions for going forward. But hardly ever is the right decision to look forward first. So here's an example of assessing. So these are a few of my private mentoring client, clients that I've worked with one-to-one. -one. So on the left-hand side, I've left no text in to give you any context. But this is Stephen, I, Steve, I don't know if you can see my, my mouse, um, but I'm pointing to get Steve on the left-hand side. So when Steve came to me, he had a great business. I think he was doing like 7K a month or something like that in British pounds. And he wanted to do a lot of different things. He was ready to scale. Um, but the reality is we, we had to kind of fill up one-to-one -one and ensure that was in a great place first. So we had one coach when we started working together. Um, so the goal initially was to increase prices, make himself fully booked, make the other coach fully booked, improve some of the processes, and then we could start adding new products and services. Now, that's what we did, right? We focused on what was already in place and we improved that first. That was the first step to scaling. Um, and now Steve's doing some crazy months. He, I know he's had a few 50K months, um, again, British pounds. So yeah, he's, he's scaled really well from that initial assessment of let's just keep on doing what we're doing, right? It's often the right thing to do. Uh, he's added group programs. He's even provides mentorship to other trainers and coaches now as well. So he's gone on to add fancy stuff, but that initial assessment showed us that the right decision was to build upon what was already being done and improve what was already being done. The guys in the middle, Mike and Dan, uh, fully booked as online coaches. They had one other coach, things were going okay, but they clearly had a massive opportunity to launch a successful group program because of the audience that they had and their other coach had, uh, because of pent up demand from their audience to work with them, but they were fully booked, um, and a lot of pent up demand from members of their audience that weren't necessarily ready for one-to-one, -one, but were ready for something else. So the decision was made to let's meet those people where they're at. Um, and we launched, or they launched something called Blitz, which was an eight week group program. That came from assessing their audience, where they were at, uh, the infrastructure they had, and what they were ready for. And that's what we did. Adam, on the right hand side, has a website called Physiconomics. Great infrastructure, um, can get clients whenever he wants because his website gets millions of visitors. So the assessment was, you know, how do we do, it wasn't how do we get one, more one-to-one -one clients or, or anything like that is, it was more of how do we leverage this amazing audience and this amazing amount of traffic that read Adam's in-depth, long-form content and provide them with something that captures them and brings them into the business and provides value. Um, and that's been Adam's focus for the past year or 18 months, building his product, which is called Platinum, which is a low cost membership site. And to be honest, I think it's something that could have tens of thousands of people in it. Um, so the focus for him was, let's take advantage of all this traffic your website gets and make sure the product is right to retain all those people as well. So I've kind of already walked through some of the business models, but let, let's quickly fly through the most common business models. And there are some uh, variations. When I say business models, a lot of what we'll speak about now are, are product options. So one-to-one -one online coaching, like a lot of people see that as not super scalable. It's way more scalable than in-person coaching, of course, but there's a lot, you, there's an amazing business to be built just on this one product. So this is my uh, private mentoring student or client, Joel, who's built a million pounds per year business just delivering one-to-one -one coaching. So when he came to me, um, we assessed where he was currently at, not just from a business perspective with lots of demand. Um, he had a lot of, he had high value perception of his product and service and people expected it to be expensive. Um, but the most important thing was what Joel wanted, right? That was the assessment. He didn't want to add any bells and whistles. He didn't want too much complexity. He didn't want new products. He wasn't fussed about building this huge community and impacting millions of people. He just wanted to impact the lives of great clients that he could work with, right? And that's what he did. So he's focused on one-to-one -one online coaching. It's delivered by himself and one team member. And we'll talk about the impact of that in a moment. The coach is salaried. They're working with 180 clients. 
current price point is 485 British pounds per month. Um, and they're basically just doing an, an extreme version of what most online coaches are doing, but they've scaled it as much as it can probably be scaled, right? If Joel wanted to, he could add more coaches now, but he doesn't want to. Um, <clears throat> but it's very simple to turn Joel's model into something more scalable just by adding more coaches. So the impact on the, the team in the business was minimal, right? So one coach that, which needed to, who needed to be hired, trained, and is now needs to be managed well. Um, and that management involves the coach being responsible for SOPs, so standard operating procedures, having KPIs, so key performance indicators, so they can be met, their performance can be measured, reviewed, uh, and moving on to obviously performance reviews, and a little bit of thought about culture as well, but not much. That's right? two of them, they get along really well, they don't have to worry about anybody else. Um, and Joel only have, having one direct report is exactly what he actually wanted zero, but he compromised so he could see that's vision of you know building this amazing business. But not a massive impact on team, which may be really appealing to a lot of you who don't see yourselves as great managers. And just on that, great management is just having good infrastructure a lot of the time. Yes, there are soft skills that, that come with being a good manager, but um, a lot of the time people are missing the, the basics of having SOPs in place, setting targets or KPIs, and then ongoing development for their team, uh, performance reviews, so to help them thrive, right, as much as anything. They're not just a tool for the business, um, they're there to thrive and really add value and they'll want to do that, so empower them uh, to do that. So group programs are another great route. Um, adding in group programs has so many pros and cons and so many considerations. Most of the time, adding group programs uh, is misunderstood. Right, so we get a lot of people like, oh, I don't want to do group programs. They're low quality. I deliver high quality service, and it's just that's from people that don't understand group programs when they're done well. So group programs are a great way to add revenue, meet your audience where they're at, generate leads for one-to-one -one clients for you or team members, get more social proof, and create a buzz. And I'm going to talk about some really important points there in just a moment. They are not lower quality services. They are not less work common misconception and they will flop if you don't have a well thought out and well implemented launch strategy. The group programs should almost never be step one. So what do I mean by group programs? Cohort based, so everybody starts at the same time, finishes at the end at the same time, usually six to eight weeks, delivered in a group. Um, a lot of the training is templated, all, all the support is mostly in a group. Uh, some individualization, especially with, in regards to nutrition targets, and the price point 100 to 200 pounds, or maybe 150 to 250 dollars, if you're in the US. So Mike and Dan were delivering one-to-one -one online coaching, they added one team member on a rev share model, uh, and then we added the Blitz program. Um, and that ensured that that team of three were fully booked as for, with one-to-one -one clients, right? Because Blitz not only generated a lot of front-end revenue, buzz and results, but also enabled more coaches to be hired to deliver Blitz and then get one-to-one -one clients off the back of the program, right? So Blitz wasn't, the group program wasn't just this front-end revenue generator. It created loads of buzz, loads of social proof, it provided new coaches with something to deliver, something to get paid for, and then loads of opportunities to fill those coaches with more one-to-one -one online clients. And this flywheel was created. Um, and now they're up to a team of six coaches, I think, uh, maybe more now, but I think it's a team of six coaches. Blitz on its own has added six, fig six figures in revenue, so their group program. Um, but the revenue off the back end, the the scale it's enabled in team, infrastructure, marketing, everything, brand, um, has, has been huge. So in terms of the impact on the team, this is where this model has its cons, right? So coaches need to be hired, trained, and now managed. Again, it involves SOPs, KPIs, etc. And now thinking about culture is really important, right? Making sure you bring in the right people, who are gonna work well together, um, represent your brand correctly, and ultimately 
like stay for a long time, right? And be part of this business for a long time and have the same values and morals and ethos as you. Multiple reports, right? You have multiple people that you're now managing. Um, so there needs to be clear separation and understanding of roles and responsibilities for everyone on the team, right? Your role here needs to be more and more um, managing those coaches, right? Especially if you're on your own. There's two people in, in the business we're talking about. But if you're on your own and you now have six coaches, then that should be the bulk of your work, right? If they're all getting fully booked, you're delivering, they're delivering group programs, um, you, you're probably in meetings with a few of them every single day on Zoom or whatever. So it's probably at this point you're thinking about bringing your own number of clients down so you're taking one step back so you can take millions of steps forward. Millions. And Adams, we've already spoke about, um, building that large scale membership platform. So just to go back, by the way, this doesn't have to be a, a group program. This could be a course. Um, they can be interchanged very easily. Um, building a large scale membership platform. So it's the low cost, high volume business model. Um, so, so many coaches come to us wanting to do this model, but they're in the, the wrong place and they think it's going to be easier, right? They think they get passive income, uh, which is BS. This is the hardest model to get right. It involves high churn, but you won't retain people at the rates you retain higher paying customers, even though it's cheaper, it requires high volume and it needs, because of the churn, it requires that, that volume of people to be uh, topped up and and constantly be driving new people into the business uh, to get anywhere close to comparable revenue of the other models, right? Uh, it's an app, it adds an absolute ton of customer service if you do find success with it, right? You're going to have to constantly add new content to keep people engaged. You're gonna have to create a community to keep people engaged and ensure people actually get results from it. Um, you know, and if it goes well, you'll have a lot of people who will still have a lot of the same demands as one-to-one -one clients. Um, they'll ask for help, they'll ask questions, um, they'll you know, use their logins for the member, lose their, their logins for the membership area, uh, and take up a lot of time. So don't think that it's gonna be easier, right? If you think that you're just gonna put some videos up in a membership site and the money's gonna roll in, it's not how it works. So membership programs are pretty self-explanatory, monthly recurring for access to content and community and, and support, but just not one-to-one. -one. Delivered in an online portal, so some type of online membership platform and something like a Facebook group as well if your membership platform doesn't have a group feature. Uh, the price point is quite varied, but 15 to 50 pounds a month or 20 to 50 dollars a month. Um, so Adam, for example, was delivering one-to-one -one online coaching first. Uh, Andy had some group programs, but as I've already mentioned, we went into membership stuff, or he decided that was the route for him um, because he's getting so much traffic, right? And just on this as well, just because Adam is focusing on his low-cost, high-volume model doesn't mean that the other products don't have a place, right? Bringing people in in almost an inverted to the way that biceps and banter, for example, work. It's that they're now starting at the cheaper program because we know we can get loads of traffic into it, but then we're still gonna offer them the other services, uh, potentially. So one-to-one -one online coaching can be sold to those people at that point, and then we can still launch the group programs and sell them to those people in there as well. So they all work together. Similar impact on team as launching the group programs. Uh, the reality is all these models feed each other. So success as a one-to-one -one coach opens the door to group programs. Success with group programs or courses, whatever, opens the door to more one-to-one -one success because of that flywheel that we spoke about. Or a membership program, right? There's nothing stopping you from doing a group program and then having a down sell into like a membership program. Um, success with a membership platform can become a way to introduce people into your business uh, and then move them into group programs and one-to-one coaching as well. So these are just products that all fit really well together, but going back to the beginning of this video, it's about assessing where you're currently at and then making the right decision from there. And that's what I've just said, the trick, right? Other considerations, your personal vision and goals, like 
What do you actually want from your business? What do you want to do in your business? What do you want outside of your business? And then making sure that the path you take in your business aligns with that vision and doesn't take you further away from the life you want to live. Uh, the impact you want to have, are you like Joel, who just wants to work with you know, probably a few hundred people over the course of the next couple of years, or maybe touching a thousand or so, a couple of thousand in his whole career? Or do you want to work with thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of people or millions, hundreds of thousands, whatever, and impact the lives of a lot of people? Neither is right or wrong. Neither is better than the other. It's up to you. Um, and then what are your strengths and weaknesses? If you're horrendous at managing people, you're just not a people person, you don't want to deal with, like, make decisions, um, then maybe you need to consider that when planning your business model. Uh, maybe you're a great manager. But your strengths and weaknesses are very important to take into consideration as well. So I hope you've taken some value from this video. Uh, it's not for everyone, but for those of you that are interested in the next steps and what you could potentially do as an online coach, then hopefully it's been useful for you. There are tons of other business models um, and opportunities for you, whether it's selling, uh, creating an app, selling eBooks, plans, um, building a huge team of coaches, whatever it may be. Um, but there are lots of opportunities for online coaches right now. These are just some of the most common ones that I've seen and I've helped online coaches deliver over the past year or so. Um, if you've got any questions on scaling your online coaching business, put them in the, in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you'd like help scaling your online coaching business and you're interested interested in one-to-one -one private mentoring with me personally, then I'll put the link below this video um, with all the information, including the price and who it's right for uh, and who it's not for. And the application, the, the button to apply will be on that page as well. So check that out. The link is below this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day. I will speak to you soon.